Imagine you find yourself sitting in the corner of a room. The door that you entered through is now completely sealed and there is no way of entering or exiting. The walls, ceiling, and floor are made up of stone. All you can do is stare into open, empty space, surrounded by cold, dark and stony walls. Due to immense boredom you fall asleep. A few hours pass by, you wake up. As you open your eyes, you are shocked to see that in the middle of the room is a desk with a computer on top of it. You approach the desk and notice some words on the computer screen. This desk and computer came from nothing. Do you believe what you have read on the screen? Of course you do not. According to this scenario, in this video we discuss one of the most important scientific topics that are disputed in scientific circles, to provide an answer to the question, did the world come from nothing? It is necessary to deal with the concept of nothing in the first step. Later, we will analyze and criticize the opinion of Lawrence Krauss regarding his book, in which he concluded based on mathematical equations that the world was created from nothing. Later, we will discuss the proof of the Holy Quran regarding the origin of the universe. Nothing is defined as the absence of all things. To illustrate this better, imagine if everything, all matter, energy and potential, were to vanish, that state would be described as nothing. This is not to be confused with the quantum vacuum or field, nothing also refers to the absence of any causal condition. A causal condition is any type of cause that produces an effect. This cause can be material or non-material. Asserting that things can come from nothing means that things can come into being from no potential, no matter, or nothing at all. To assert such a thing defies our intuitions and stands against reason. So could the universe have come into existence from nothing? The obvious answer is no, because from nothing, nothing comes. Nothingness cannot produce anything. Something cannot arise from no causal conditions whatsoever. Another way of looking at it is by way of simple math. What is zero plus zero plus zero? It is not three, it's zero. For something to arise from nothing it must have at least some type of potential or causal conditions. Since nothing is the absence of all things, including any type of causal condition, then something could not arise from nothing. Maintaining that something can arise from nothing is logically equivalent to the notion that things can vanish, decay, annihilate, or disappear without any causal conditions whatsoever. A common contention is that the universe could come from nothing because in the quantum vacuum particles pop into existence. This argument assumes that the quantum vacuum is nothing. However, this is not true. The quantum vacuum is something, it is not an absolute void, and it obeys the laws of physics. The quantum vacuum is a state of fleeting energy. So it is not nothing, it is something physical. Professor Lawrence Cross's book, A Universe from Nothing, invigorated and popularized the debate on the Leibnizian question, why is there something rather than nothing? In his book, Krauss argues that it is plausible that the universe arose from nothing. Absurd as this may sound, a few presuppositions and clarifications need to be brought to light to understand the context of his conclusions. Krauss's nothing is actually something. In his book he calls nothing unstable and elsewhere he affirms that nothing is something physical, which he calls empty but pre-existing space. This is an interesting linguistic deviation, as the definition of nothing in the English language refers to a universal negation, 
but it seems that cross as nothing is a label for something. Although his research claims that nothing is the absence of time, space, and particles, he misleads the untrained reader and fails to confirm, explicitly, that there is still some physical stuff. Even if, as Krauss claims, there is no matter, there must be physical fields. This is because it is impossible to have a region where there are no fields because gravity cannot be blocked. In quantum theory, Gravity at this level of reality does not require objects with mass, but does require physical stuff. Therefore, Cross's nothing is actually something. Elsewhere in his book, he writes that everything came into being from quantum fluctuations, which explains a creation from nothing, but that implies a pre-existent quantum state in order for that to be a possibility. The Quran provides a powerful argument for God's existence or were they created by nothing? Or were they the creators of themselves? Or did they create the heavens and earth? Rather, they are not certain. Although this argument refers to the human being, it can also be applied to anything that began to exist or anything that emerged. The Quran uses the word kaliku, which means created, made, or originated. So it can refer to anything that came into being. Now let us break down the argument. The Quran mentions four possibilities to explain how something was created or came into being or existence. Created by nothing, or were they created by nothing? Self created, or were they the creators of themselves? Created by something created, or did they create the heavens and the earth? Which implies a created thing being ultimately created by something else created, created by something uncreated, rather, they are not certain, implying that the denial of God is baseless. And therefore, the statement implies that there is an uncreated creator. This argument can also be turned into a universal formula that does not require reference to scripture. 1. The universe is finite. 2. Finite things could have come from nothing, created themselves, been ultimately created by something created, or been created by something uncreated. 3. They could not have come from nothing, created themselves, or have been ultimately created by something created. 4. Therefore, they were created by something uncreated.